If you are new to making cheese boards or platters, this is a video for you. I'm going to teach you how to walk through the steps of making your board from start to finish. And this is especially going to be useful for anybody who wants to start creating their boards or platters without a recipe and just use their creativity to create whatever they want. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Jessica and I'm super excited to have you here today and talk about one of my favorite things, cheese boards. My family seems to think that my only love is cheese boards, which they're not wrong because if you come over to my house, you'll likely find a border platter that I've created. So maybe they are right. I was recently creating a cheese board and realized that I kind of have a method to my madness for creating all the different crazy boards that I have on my blog. And I thought, it's probably something that other people might want to know, especially if you've never before made a cheese board in your life. Charcuterie and cheese boards are actually really fun to create because you can customize them specifically to what you know you and your guests will love. In this video, we're going to be talking all about how to create your very own board. So I'm going to take you through my brainstorming process of coming up with an idea for your cheese board, what to include when you're going to the grocery store on your shopping list for your cheese board, and then finally how to put it all together because I know that process can be overwhelming for some people trying to make it look super pretty and put together. So don't worry, I have a process for this all. So stick around and I hope you enjoy. Step one in the process of creating your very own border platter is first the brainstorming step. So for this step, I like to gather some inspiration. A lot of people think that with cheese boards, you only have to have meat, cheese, fruit, but really nowadays your border platter can have whatever you want on it. There's lots of fun boards for hot cocoa bars, for Mexican food for literally so many different opportunities. Take some time to browse through Pinterest or Instagram and see what inspires you. So while you're browsing, I like to jot down some notes and here are the key things I look for. Are there any colors that are inspiring you or sticking out to you? If you have any color palettes that you like, maybe even take a screenshot of them. Are there any fun products or food items that you know you wanna include in your board? So I recently made a fall cheese board and I knew that I wanted to have different fall flavors. You can also see if there are any fun shapes or motifs that you want in your board. Sometimes I've seen people cut their cheese into different shapes. That can be really cool. I would also decide if you want to have a more elegant board or go towards a more whimsical side of things. Now that you have some ideas and inspiration floating in your head, we now have to decide what we want to put on the charcuterie board. So for this, I wanted to give you all some inspiration and I actually made a list of over 100 plus ideas of things that you can put on your charcuterie board. So I'll leave that link in the description below. You can sign up and it will get emailed straight to you. And I love to start with this list because it just helps give me some inspiration to take whatever I saw on Pinterest and actually write down what kind of products I want to use on my board. Now I do have certain categories that I use for almost every board. These aren't going to necessarily apply to non-traditional boards if you're doing like a taco board or something like that, so keep that in mind. But for most of my boards, I use these few categories for every single one. So first up, we have our meat or our actual charcuterie section of the board. For this section, you'll want to plan on about four to six slices of whatever kind of meat you use per person. Now, I personally love prosciutto, salami, but there are endless possibilities out there and I have a lot listed on that shopping list that you can sign up for. Next up, we have cheese, which is also a very fun part of any board. The fun part about this is getting to go to the store and pick out whatever cheese sounds good. I know that Aldi or Trader Joe's or whatever store you have near you, a lot of them have huge cheese sections and it's fun to go browse and see which type of cheese will go with your board. Now for this, I like to have a strategy. So instead of just getting cheeses that all look the same, I like to vary them. Now this could be in terms of either taste texture, or color. In terms of taste, obviously there are different cheeses. There are sharp cheeses, there are 
or blue cheese that have a more pungent taste, you can vary it in that sense. You could also look at for especially themed boards, getting some fun cheeses. For example, if you were doing a Halloween board, you could get a cheese that has like a veiny black or blue color in it to kind of go off of that motif. Just play around and have fun with the cheeses. There are endless opportunities. Switch things up and do different fun things for each different board that you make. Next up we have produce and this is oftentimes where you'll see the different pops of color come in for a lot of different boards or platters. You can use fruits, you can use vegetables, you could use fresh, or you could use dry. There's really lots of opportunities here to add in various types of produce. Remember in terms of produce that you'll always want to make sure that there's little bite-sized pieces. So if you have a big thing of grapes, maybe think about cutting it up so that way there's only a couple grapes on each stem. So just to make it a little bit easier for whoever's eating your platter. You can't forget your dippers section and this is the category that I like to use for any crackers or bread that you put on your board. You could also use pita or the crispy breadsticks. There's lots of different possibilities. This is also a fun category to kind of mix up and make your own. In the past, I've made my own star tortilla chips. Those are really fun and went with a 4th of July charcuterie board. If you're doing kind of a non-traditional board, you could think of it in terms of something completely different than even bread. So I've seen a really cool brunch pancake board. Those could kind of be your dippers. So have fun with this category. There's lots of different options. Now another thing that I like to be aware of in terms of adding some variety and some spice to each board or platter that I make is having a savory and a sweet element. When you're talking about a traditional charcuterie board, some example of savory items could be nuts, olives, pickles, it's also fun in this category to add something in that has like a nice briny, salty taste. And then for sweet, you have lots of different options, but a few of my favorites include jam or honey that pairs really nicely with a lot of different cheeses. You could also do candies or chocolate covered strawberries, anything like this that adds a little bit of sweet touch to your board. And finally, a category that you can't forget, but I feel like a lot of people often do, is your garnishes. This is really what ties your charcuterie board together and kind of makes it look a little more upscale. So for your garnishes, it's really gonna depend on what type of board you're making, but traditionally speaking, a lot of times herbs are used or even slices of candied like fruit. You could also do a little bit drizzle of honey and that would be perfect for the final garnishes. Now I know that was probably a lot, so if you need some inspiration, don't forget to grab that grocery shopping list in the description below to help you get started with all of your brainstorming ideas. When it comes to making charcuterie boards at home, a lot of times people wonder how much does it cost to make a cheese board. Now I can't give you a firm answer on this just because every board is going to cost a little bit different depending on the products you use and where you shop. But in general, I would say probably plan on spending around $50. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but really when you spend money on these items, you're investing in certain items that can be used multiple times. Let me give you an example. When you buy a jar of honey, that might be five to eight dollars depending on where you're buying it, but you're not going to use up that whole jar of honey in one board. So think about the fact that you're more investing in items so that way you can use them throughout your time of making different boards. The pricier items on any charcuterie board are always going to be your meat and your cheese. For your cheese, you'll probably spend around three to eight dollars depending on what wedge or block that you buy and where you buy it at. But these are the things that are really going to make your charcuterie board stand out. The meat's probably also a little bit pricier, but again, these are the quality items that you're really gonna enjoy eating and that are gonna make your board feel a little bit more upscale. Don't feel bad if you buy one or two cheeses as a splurge. There are also some things you can do to save some money and make other parts of the board cost a little bit less. The part of my board that I like to keep a little bit cheaper is what I call my filler items. These items are things that either A, you can usually buy in bulk or B, are fairly cheap. For example, popcorn is a great filler item. Not only is it cheap, but it fills up a lot of room and you can buy a whole bag and refill your board or platter as needed. 
Other filler items could also be whatever dippers you choose, your produce, or even olives or pickles. Those are all ingredients that are relatively inexpensive and will help fill up your board so you don't have to spend as much money on your meat or your cheese. So now that we have a little bit more info about how much the board costs, what you need to put on it, I wanna talk about my favorite cheese board essentials. Now these are things that if you make cheese boards a lot, they're probably gonna be a good investment for you to have so you can just use them every time that you make a board or platter. The first and most important thing is having, of course, your board that you place everything on. Now there are lots of different options in terms of size and shape and color, but my suggestion is buying something that's a little bit more neutral so no matter what theme or board you make you can always use this neutral platter. I tend to like a board that's around 11 by 17 inches and this is because it's big enough to hold a decent amount of food but not so huge that you have to spend tons of money to fill it up and make it look nice and full. If you're new to charcuterie boards and platters and you're not sure how many you're gonna make, another trick that I like to save money is to just use a plate or something that I already have laying around the house. So often we see all these like perfect boards on Instagram and we feel pressured to buy a $50 board, but you really don't have to. If you just have a plain white plate or even a fun colored plate, you can still stack your items up and make them look super elegant and pretty for your board. The next thing that I like to have on hand for my boards and platters are small bowls or little condiment holders. What these do are kind of twofold. So first off, they prevent any of your like kind of leaky items from getting the rest of the board soggy. So if you have pickles, you don't want the brine to drip off and get your crackers soggy. So you can put them in a nice little bowl. And then visually, the bowls kind of help break up your board or platter. It gives a little different bit of color or kind of visually, it can also be a high point on your board. So I really suggest just getting a few different either clear, white, or silver little bowls that you can use again and again for all of your different boards. And my last cheese board essential is a good set of cheese knives. Typically when you buy this, you'll have a pack of four and I like having this variety so that way no matter what type of cheese you buy, you always have a knife that goes along with it. Different knives have different purposes. An example is a chisel knife is usually used to divide soft cheese or shave down hard cheese. Your open work blade is the one that has the holes in it and it prevents the cheese from sticking to the blade. There's also the narrow plane knife and this is a fairly versatile knife that can cut on the long or the short end. And then you have your small spade knife and the point on the knife makes it easy to cut the cheese into different wedges. I'll leave a link to all all my favorite cheese boards essentials in the description box below that way you can pick some up if you're new and want to start making cheese boards right away we finally reached the last step and this is the most fun because we finally get to plate our cheese board up a lot of times people during this step will be intimidated and don't know how or where to put their different items but my biggest piece of advice is to not worry about it and just kind of do whatever your heart desires. We all have a sense of creativity deep down inside us, so use yours and make your board unique and original to you. That being said, my husband is probably one of the least creative people I know, and I know there are people that are like him out there who want more advice than to just use your creativity. So let me give you a few pieces of advice that I use in order to kind of have a method to my madness when plating a cheese board. The first thing I always do is place my large anchor items. This will vary depending on your board, but typically it's either a large wedge of cheese or whatever kind of item visually that you want to be the focal point of your board. Next up, I like to kind of look at the board and assess where things are at and what colors they are. So next I like to place contrasting colors next to each other. This will help break up the board and add some nice visual appeal to it. In a similar sense of colors varying being next to each other, I also like to vary up the different textures that are next to each other. This is just one more element to be able to add some variety to the board. That being said, if you would prefer to have like items that are supposed to be eaten together, 
placed next to each other, you could also do that. And then like we talked about with our small bowls and condiment holders, adding a little bit of height to our board. After you've placed the majority of your board down, you can kind of go in and see where things are lacking or where maybe you need a little bit of height to add some visual interest and you can add those there. And then finally, don't forget to add your garnish. Like I said earlier, that's the finishing touch and that's what really brings your board together. And there you have it. Those are my tips and tricks for anybody who's a beginner at making boards or platters. You can probably see that there are some steps to it, but it's really not as complicated as you may think. If you have any other suggestions or questions about creating charcuterie boards, feel free to throw those in the comments below. And I always love seeing everybody's boards and creations, so if you make one, feel free to tag me on social media and show me. I always love seeing more inspiration and getting new ideas for future boards. Alright, so what are you waiting for? Go make your board. I'll see you in the next one.